was born in Iowa. Iowa land, he painted the gentle curve of her hills, the changing moods of her sky, the stiff regimented fields of corn. He traveled the new roads of Iowa looking for work. He mowed lawns, painted houses, milked cows, did all sorts of odd jobs. And in the evenings when his day's work was done, he taught himself to draw. Like many other embryo artists, he went to Paris. He grew a spectacular crop of pink whiskers and tried to adapt himself to the prevailing impressionistic school. Dissatisfied, homesick, he returned to Iowa to the people and scenes that were part of him. He painted a Cedar Rapids undertaker who befriended him. He called it John B. Turner, pioneer. He painted the famous woman with plants a truly devotional study of his mother, a frontier woman, weary, worn from the struggle with a hard life, her face reflecting great courage and deep understanding. When his painting American Gothic appeared at the Chicago Art Institute annual exhibit in 1930, it caused a sensation and Grant attained fame overnight. He had transformed his sister and his dentist into hard-working Corn Belt farmers. American Gothic eloquently brought out Wood's unusual style. The shape of the pitchfork repeated in the farmer's overalls. The pattern of the apron reflecting the pattern in the window curtain. took shape in a region hardly typical of Iowa. A ghost town, it was once a quarrying center, and Wood's painting of it was a forerunner of a series of bouncing landscapes that are synonymous with his name. One of these famous landscapes was the birthplace of Herbert Hoover. Grant had given it his exaggerated styling and had tailored it to his taste. So much so that the yarn goes that the neighboring farmer looking at the picture said, yep, that's the place, all right. And we sure want to thank you for cutting them weeds. In painting trees, he allowed his imagination to run wild. But the fanciful trees in so many of his pictures were not entirely his own invention. He got them from the trees on his mother's blue and white Haviland china. His simple, orderly, fresh landscapes told so well the story of the Iowan scene. 
Farms well tilled, barns well filled. Chickens fascinated Grant Wood from childhood. They were almost human to him. And he could see a parallel between a crowing rooster and an antiquated lady skinny with age. Woods pictures would make a rare farm calendar. January, February, and March, April, May, and June, July, August. September, October, November, and December. Grant Wood turned to delightful fantasy in the midnight ride of Paul Revere. Using a nursery rocking horse and doll-like houses reflecting the words of the poet Longfellow. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. He saw the gilded weathercock swim in the moonlight as he passed, and the meeting house windows, blank and bare, gaze at him with a spectral glare, as if they already stood aghast. A hurry of hoofs in a village street, a shape in the moonlight, a bulk in the dark, and beneath from the pebbles in passing a spark, struck out by a steed flying fearless and fleet. So through the night rode Paul Revere. And so through the night went to every Middlesex village and farm. From fantasy to satire was only a step for Grant Wood. His Daughters of Revolution released a storm of protest and controversy. He answered the criticism with, I don't like people who are trying to set up an aristocracy of birth in a republic. He went from fantasy and satire to fable when he created the canvas, Parson Weems' Fable. About little George Washington who cut down his papa's cherry tree the day after he was six years old. He did it with his little hatchet. In February, and the tree was in full bloom from fable to fun was just another milestone in Wood's career. He was amused when universities gave him honorary degrees. He, who couldn't pass the Iowa teacher's examination in 1912. He found further fun when he ran into dignified Shriners, lifting their voices in harmony. Painting he made in Hollywood, Sentimental Ballad, was so real, it looked like a scene from a movie. It featured Tom Mitchell, John Wayne, Barry Fitzgerald, and others around a table, barbershop courting, crying in their beer. Although Wood 
once strayed from time to time, he always returned to his first love. His last paintings revealed that his heart was still with the people and the land. Always he was simple and honest as in his masterpiece of Americana, Dinner for Threshers, an annual event on American farms in the old days, when men from far and near came with their horses, wagons, and hay racks to help you haul your stocks of grain from the fields, to thresh out the chaff, to store your grain away, a definite picture of a real part of America, symbolized by his own words, I had in mind the picture of a country rich in the arts of peace, homely, lovable, and infinitely worth any sacrifice. <laughs> 